Let's get to know New York Giants fifth round draft pick of linebacker Micah McFadden out of Indiana. And who better to spill the tea on the Giants' newest addition than Jacob Rude, host of the Locked on Hoosiers podcast. That's coming up next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast family, your team every day. Patricia Trainer here with you, and we are continuing our look at the New York Giants 2022 draft class. A very interesting class, to say the least. They hit a home run on the day one, day two, and day three. A few question marks, but you know, that's why... I am reaching out to my colleagues over on the Locked On College channel to get some more information because these folks not only do a fantastic job covering their teams, they also watch these guys and they can tell us everything we need to know, probably including what they these guys prefer for breakfast. So that's <laughs> what we are going to do on today's program. And again, thank you for making us your first listen of the day or watching on YouTube, your first watch of the day. Joining me here on the podcast is Locked On Hoosiers host, Jacob Root, and he is going to tell us everything we need to know about linebacker Micah McFadden, chosen by the New York Giants, Round five, the first of the three fifth round picks the Giants had, number 146 overall. Jacob, thank you, as always, for coming on. I really appreciate it, and great to have you with us. Yeah, anytime. Like I said beforehand, I I love to uh, to talk about Micah any chance I get, so I'm looking forward to, uh, to telling you guys about him because he was one of the most fun players I used had in the past, I don't know, quite a while. All right, well, let's kick it off. Give us a general overview about Micah as a person, as a player. What what can the Giants expect in this young man? Well, with Indiana, he was everything to them defensively. Uh, Indiana has had, uh, well, prior to last season, I should say, had a little bit of a, a resurgence. And um, I, I shouldn't even really say resurgence because it was some of the best uh, teams that they've ever had. And they were so good defensively uh, during those couple of seasons. And Micah was just at the core of that. And he was kind of the heart and soul of this defense. Um, I guess in a lot of ways, as you would expect, kind of a, a linebacker to be right in the middle of the field, just guiding everything for this team. So he meant so much to uh, this Indiana football program the last couple of seasons as they've gone from um, this kind of not really thought about program to one that uh, during the COVID season um, gave Ohio State everything it could handle, for example. Uh, and and Micah was so vital to everything they did off it, or excuse me, defensively. He uh, he's such a unique player. He's not really a, a somebody you just looking at him. You can tell he's not really somebody you would think of as a as an inside linebacker. He isn't going to overwhelm you with kind of physicality or, or anything like that. He's not even really, he's a smaller player in general, but um, he's someone that he has a really unique ability to get into the backfield and just this like will and uh, desire that uh, you, you can see all the time on the field. And a lot of that is what rubbed off on this defense as a whole and, is what made him and IU during that stretch so successful, just this constant drive and like this constant fire almost that that he consistently played with that that made him both so successful and someone that IU fans fell in love with because no matter what the the situation was, I mean there were a lot of times IU lost really big, uh, as IU tends to do in football, but uh, no matter if they were down 20 or in a close game against Ohio State, he was playing with kind of that same level of fire and intensity. And um, those were the things that, that really made IU fans fall in love with him. Sounds like a, a very interesting player. And, you know, speaking of interesting, he had an interesting path to get to Indiana. I understand he played with um, head coach Tom Allen's son, I guess, at mm -hmm. high, in high school. And that's how he first 
discovered him, if you will, and I guess he recruited him. Um, Micah went to, I think, in Tampa, right? High school in Tampa, if I'm not mistaken, in Florida. And uh, lo and behold, instead of staying in Florida, he ended up in Indiana. So the big score for uh, for the Hoosiers. Yeah, it was. It is a really interesting story. He, uh, Tom Allen's son, yeah, played with him, and it wasn't anybody that was on Indiana's radar. Uh, and it was just kind of one of those. He saw him play with his son, and was like, "Man, this guy." is pretty good and uh started recruiting him and he came from plant high school in tampa iu has a an oddly strong kind of connection to that area uh through tom allen so uh they were able to to land him he was only i believe maybe a two-star recruit or three-star recruit coming out of high school he wasn't uh this big name recruit at all um and he even early on he had to really work his way into a role with the team uh, it was a lot of special team stuff which he presumably will play some uh in the nfl as well but it was a lot of special team stuff and he slowly kind of got working his way more and more uh into uh defensive plays and defensive packages and eventually into being kind of the the heart and soul of this team but no, it was certainly not any kind of normal route as a, a five-star recruit or anything. He wasn't even somebody that was on uh, the coaching staff's radar until he saw his son playing with them. That's an in interesting story and, and certainly, you know, a rags to riches type of story. Very much. Let's, let's talk a little bit about what Micah brings to the table. Now, um, you know, we have the basic core traits, play strength, uh, football acumen, you know, that sort of thing. What are some of the things he excels in in those core strengths of a football player? And what does he still need to kind of brush up on? And we'll talk about the position, position specifics in just a minute, but I want to focus on the core. I, I would say kind of a, two of his biggest strengths is just kind of his instincts or his IQ, however you want to kind of quantify that. But um, his ability to kind of read a defense and be aware of, uh, of what's going on. And uh, it allows him to make uh, big plays all the time. And uh, it was always a thing when it was with IU this season, that if somebody was in the backfield making a big play, it was Micah McFadden. And no matter what type of play it was, he had an ability to um, read the play and diagnose it and snuff it out. A lot of times I saw a really interesting kind of description of, of him. And this kind of goes into something else I think is a strength of his is, he almost reads like blocks like a running back and allows him to get in between blocks and get into the backfield because he's not, like I said, he's a small guy. He doesn't have great length or anything like that. So uh, his ability to kind of read things on the fly and get through the offensive line and some of those guys that would deter him allowed him to get into the backfield, which uh, is really his, his other biggest strength is just his ability to get into the backfield and, he blitzed a lot with Indiana. The Indiana ran just this – it's a really unique defense with just lots of blitzing from different places and different positions. So uh, he, you wouldn't necessarily expect someone like Micah McFadden, an inside linebacker, to blitz a lot, but he did. And he was probably Indiana's best player at getting to the quarterback. He had 12 and a half sacks the last two years combined. Um and again, that kind of plays into his ability. I mean, it was a lot of just kind of a gap blitzes, but it, it it still plays into his ability to to read kind of the the offensive line and get through there and get to the quarterback and, and kind of create havoc and create chaos plays and and really um, kind of drive that Indiana defense along the way. So I would say his instincts and his ability to read the field as well as just his ability to kind of to create havoc is probably the best way to describe it, whether uh, on run plays, pass plays, just kind of getting into the backfield were, were two of the biggest strengths of his. And of course, you know, the Giants with Don Martindale going to run a blitz heavy defense. So it sounds mm -hmm. like, you know, they really targeted guys who have experience doing that in college. 
All right, Giant fans, we have more coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast. But first, Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, but without the calories and without the sugar. Most Built Bars contain around 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein, and they taste great. Built Bar offers 9 amazing flavors, a nut and nut-free variety, plus a rotating limited-time offering of different flavors that changes up every so many weeks. Head on over to BuiltBar.com today to see what their current flavor lineup looks like and use our special promo code LOCKED15 to save 15% off your first order. Again, that code is LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Now, when you look at Micah's game, is he a true box linebacker or is he more of a B-gap to B-gap type of guy? It's really interesting. He... I'm not entirely sure, to be honest, just because he's such a, uh, a a unique player. He's not what you typically think of when you think of a, an inside linebacker with um, his, his kind of lack of size and, and what he excels at. Um, I mean, at Indiana, he was everywhere <laughs> to 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 be blunt. I mean, he was he was everything for Indiana, but I'm not sure how that would translate to uh, the NFL. But he he was someone who um i he he just played so many different types of roles and he would sometimes blitz off the edge and sometimes come through the middle and he would play uh in coverage so i'm not really sure what his kind of role in the nfl will be um in in terms of that i i know that indiana was really creative in how they used him and kind of putting him in different positions and obviously, as I said, if you have a blitz heavy type of package or defensive coordinator, I think that's the best way to use him. But um, I mean, he's not somebody that, like I said, it has a ton of size or, or anything like that. And I do kind of worry when you get against bigger kind of offensive linemen and, and things of that nature, if th- some of those instincts will be enough for him to to still make an impact. But um it, it, I, I'm kind of fascinated to see how he's used in the NFL because I don't think you can just typically use him as you would a regular inside linebacker just because that's not really what his strength has been, and, and he just doesn't have the size or anything to do that. But if you can kind of get creative with how you use him, uh, I think he can be a really impactful player. I don't know if that really answers the question, but uh, I'm not entirely certain how he would be used because he's just so small, but – such a unique player. And when you say small, just to clarify, he's six foot one, 240 pounds, but he's, he's thick, he's muscular. Very, so, very. so he's, you know, he's packs a punch. I'm sure despite the fact that he doesn't have ideal height and size for an inside linebacker. So that said, I mean, if you were advising Don Martindale on how to u- utilize him, I mean, what areas of his game have you seen to be, ones that have made you cringe and say, gee, I wish they really wouldn't use him in that regard, maybe coverage, you know, against the tight end. Where where would you kind of stay away from if you were designing a role for him on the defense? Yeah, probably pass coverage and really just kind of playing in space. He's not going to overwhelm you with his athleticism or anything like that. He doesn't have great speed or or nece- lateral quickness necessary, necessarily, but uh, so a lot of the passing downs, uh, I wouldn't expect him at least early on to see a lot of time. Uh, I would anticipate it would be more rundowns that he would see his uh, action. But uh, yeah, if, if you get him in pass coverage and uh, he has to kind of be in space and, and things like that, then uh, he's not going to be as great. Uh, now, if you can use him as more of a blitzer in those situations, then uh, maybe that's the compromise there but if he's gonna have to like drop back and and get into pass coverage then uh you kind of start seeing where he doesn't have like great length or or great kind of wingspan i know that's an nba term but he doesn't have like long arms and he he's not fast and and things like that and you're going to see a lot more of those weaknesses so uh, i would say yeah pass coverage and just kind of being in space in that regard uh is a, a weakness of his is he the type of guy who maybe in certain circumstances you could line him out, line him up, excuse me, on the outside, or do you think he's just strictly keep him on the inside? That's where he's going to be at his best. I 
I think you could potentially. Uh, I I wondered if teams were going to do that uh, in the NFL as well. He just has such a great ability to get into the backfield. Um, now he would probably have to get a little bit quicker to to kind of play on the outside to to get around the edge, and I would worry about him being blocked at the line. He's probably not going to get through many blocks or anything like that. But yeah, I think in certain situations that that could be the possibility because. Um, I mean, I, I assume you guys are going to see it. I know I keep saying it, but just his ability to constantly be in the backfield was something that uh, we saw for the last three, four years of it was just remarkable that in, in a lot of situations he, he can um, get through the line and get into the backfield and, and create that havoc. So I think I, I, I thought the same that potentially he could be lined up more on the edge or something like that um, in certain or in the right situations as well. Now, because he plays with such great instinct and he trusts his eyes, one of the benefits I think he can bring to a defense is the ability to sniff out and blow up screens, which were a problem for the Giants in the past. Do you see that in his in his game as well? Yeah, he's very disciplined. Um, you're not going to fool him too often, if at all. I, I can hardly remember any type of play where he was kind of badly fooled or something like that. Um he was the leader of this defense and uh, looked the, the smartest player on the field a lot of times. So he's not someone that just kind of pins his ears back and goes flying at the quarterback at every chance. Uh, he's someone that can read things and can with like, like you said, with, with screens or something like that. I think he would be someone that could pretty easily snuff that out. And um, it, that wasn't an issue at all at Indiana. And a lot of times it, it felt a lot better having him on the field in those situations because uh, you knew he wasn't going to get burned like that. Now, he's not going to grow probably any taller. I think he's probably topped out. That being said, what can he do to kind of mitigate some of the size concerns here? You know, because he's going to be going up against some pretty big guys at the NFL level. Is it a matter of strength, do you think? Um, can he work further on, on a particular area of his game that's – a strength, but can be even stronger. How can he mitigate some of the issues so that he doesn't get caught up in the wash? Yeah, it's, it's going to have to be building up the strength, building up some more quickness, um, things like that, that you can, that you can control. Cause yeah, I, I think his growth spurt's probably done. Um, he's already, like you said, for how short he is, he's a, he's a thick guy. So um, that will help just kind of building up on some of that strength and, uh, I really think quickness is something that he's going to work a lot on um, because that was in general kind of a weakness, but um, it, it's, it's going to be a lot of um, a lot of things like that. Maybe learning some, he wasn't really in a situation a lot of times where he had to work through the offensive line or anything or blockers like that. So there might just be some technique stuff he'll have to learn as well in the NFL, but uh, I would imagine it's going to be a, a lot of work on his uh, speed, mobility, uh, quickness, things like that, because fortunately he doesn't have a couple more inches to grow you anymore. And uh, he's kind of stuck with the height he has. So uh, just kind of maybe bulking up or getting a little bit faster to, to handle those blockers would be my guess. Yeah, definitely. I mean, explosiveness and, and that quick first step is so important. If you can stun your opponent Yep. in the NFL or even in college, chances are you're going to win that battle. Now, I also read that he was a captain for two seasons, which probably speaks a lot to, you know, the character that he brings to the locker room. And as an inside linebacker, of course, he's the quarterback of that defense. So can you talk a little bit about that aspect of his game, you know, how he was received by his teammates? You know, if he had to miss a game, did they really notice he was gone and that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. He was very much the leader of this defense the last two seasons. Uh, he was, I, I think, probably in that respect, the the best example I can give you is last season, Indiana played Cincinnati, who obviously ended up going to the college football playoff. And in the first half, Indiana was, completely dominated that game. And um, Micah was all over the place defensively. He had Desmond Ritter playing terribly through the first about 27 minutes or so. And then there was a really uh, bad 
targeting call against Micah himself, uh, getting to the quarterback just like a split second late. His hand kind of brushed the helmet, and they called targeting, and he was thrown out of the game, and it went from Indiana being in complete control of that game, up 14 nothing. They'd thrown away a couple opportunities, too, to Cincinnati completely taking control of the game from then on out, and they ended up winning pretty comfortably in that game. Uh, so that kind of all is what I always point back to is his impact on the game because with him on the field, there was um, this level of uh, – I'm not even sure what the word would be, but like – optimism or confidence or, or swagger maybe that um this team was this defense this unit was really good and he was always at the center of all of that and when he was gone like he was in that game then everything kind of crumbled um part of that was because he just had so much responsibility with the defense uh as you say kind of the quarterback of the defense right in the heart of it um that it's, it was impossible to kind of replace him especially on the fly uh, but he's a, a terrific person, um, a, a leader in the locker room, as you said, a, a captain the last two years, um, and someone who, no matter how ugly or how pretty it got for Indiana, and there was a lot of that the last two years, a, a high variance, uh, he was someone that always kind of kept the same level head and was someone that would always kind of talk to the media afterwards, for example, no matter how bad it got. Um, he was someone that was always kind of a public face and and willing to talk about what happened and, and well-respected in the locker room. So he's someone that IU fans absolutely love. And um, I mean, realistically, we've had the discussion over at Locked on Hoosiers, probably IU's best player in the last at least decade or so. It's not a, it's not a rich list for IU football, but He's someone that established himself the last two seasons is, um, if not even the best player, just a favorite player of fans just because of uh, what he brought to the team kind of week in and week out. Now, you mentioned that, uh, or at the start of the podcast that he has some special teams experience. Where did he kind of excel in that? Can he be a core special teams guy, do you think? It was a long time ago that he played special teams, so I'm not – it was his freshman season, um, and it wasn't for a ton of time. I, I'm not entirely sure where he would fit in in terms of special teams. Uh, like I said, he, he doesn't have kind of explosive speed or anything. Uh, he can read things well, which might lend itself to him playing more uh, on special teams. He's obviously not going to be a guy that's the first one down the field or anything like that. Um, but... I mean, he can he can still read the game just fine in that regard as well. Like you saw some of the the flashes as a uh, freshman playing in the special teams of of making plays like that. So um, I think he could be someone that maybe in his role could be a, a core special teams guy. Um, he's obviously going to have the same issues with uh, quickness and, and explosiveness getting down the field, but. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, he reads the game so well, no matter what kind of role he's playing, whether it's special teams, whether it's defensively, that I think he would excel at that as well. All right. Now, final question for you. What's something that we don't know about Micah McFadden that uh, you think might be interesting for Giant fans to know? That is interesting. At this point, uh, I'm not entirely certain. I wish I... I had a, a fun answer, but um, I, I just know he's going to be someone that uh, if it, if he plays like he did in Bloomington, he's going to be someone that Giants fans, I think, will fall in love with and really enjoy because um, he's he's not your typical player when it comes to inside linebackers. And uh, he's a unique and fun player and someone that's always going to play hard. Um, so I, I'm in terms of what you don't know, I'm not entirely sure, but what I do know is that, uh, I, I think Giants fans will really, really like Micah. I'll have to just try and see if I can fish some of it out, you know, a funny story or, you know, just some little thing, you know, just to humanize people. Cause a lot of times 
we just see the guy in the helmet and I like to go and get to know the guy underneath the helmet whether it be a cause that he supports or something like that just just because like I said it's the human element but uh, certainly from a football perspective it sounds like the Giants got themselves a good one a really good value all things all things considering I mean end of the fifth round there um, with the the pick they acquired in the trade with the New York Jets in the second round which uh, good for them on that so anyway um, Sorry, my microphone got, got disconnected there. All right. So anyway, uh, Jacob, I appreciate the information. I think this was this was very informative. Folks, you can find him on Locked on Hoosiers. He is the host. And please check out all our college podcasts. Those folks really do a great job. And they don't just cover football. They cover basketball, if that's your thing. And probably some of the other sports that recruiting I'm sure is a big thing I know that's coming up or is in progress right now so uh, Jacob I appreciate the the time uh, folks thank you so much for making the Locked On Giants podcast your first listen of the day or if watching on YouTube your first watch of the day we will continue to bring you more on the Giants draft choices with our experts we have Rick Saratella is going to come on the program with us David Turner we're going to do North Carolina coming up soon so so much coming up here on the left on giants podcast folks we will catch you again tomorrow